I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. If you're glad to be in the house one more time, why don't you give the Lord a hand praise? Why don't you show the Lord how much he's been to you? Come on, you can do better than that. God has been good to you. Yeah, you, when you mention the name Jesus, you ought to give God praise as best you can because he's worthy to be praised. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Just a few announcements on this blessed communion Sunday morning. Uh, we, rec we want to bring to your attention. Don't forget Black History Month is well on its way. Uh, this month of February. Everyone is asked to wear their African attire on the fourth Sunday in February to celebrate those who have paved the way for us all. Uh, all Mount Zion business owners are asked to share their business information so that it can be featured this year for black history. Please input your information on the Google link or contact Mrs. Doris Humphreys uh, for more information. The Google link has been sent out, I, my understanding from Ms. Monica, our secretary on our webpage, and our one call. If you do not have it, please contact Ms. Monica anytime from Monday through Wednesday through her business hours, 10 to 3 in the afternoon. Women's Day registration is now on the way. Uh, you can register in the month of February and the month of March. Registration is $25. Please see any program committee member for more details. Anyone that is interested in helping plan this year's Women's Day event, please meet in the fellowship hall after services on the third Sunday of this month. That's February the 19th. Your input is greatly appreciated. The all-male choir who sung on last night at the event at the Little River Association will be celebrating their 45th anniversary on this March the 26th, March the 26th at 4 p.m. For more details, please contact any member of the male choir. Please continue to pray for any sick or shut-in members that you may know of uh, that we do not have before us. I know that we're still continuously to pray for Ms. Barbara Talbert. Spoke with her this morning. She's doing much better. To God be the glory for that. Uh, to Deacon Skeeter, who's here with us. We thank God for him, and, and he wants to thank everyone this morning, and I'm going to give him that opportunity to do so. And so continuously to pray for those. Miss Keller, I know, has been out sick, and I don't know she's with us. Oh, she's back with us. To God be the glory for the wonderful things that he has done. To all of you, to our friends and family here at the Mount Zion Baptist Church, we greet you once more and again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Is there any visitors visiting with us this morning who have not been here, who's not a member of the Mount Zion Baptist Church, or maybe you're just returning? We ask that you stand and be recognized, and if so, we can do that at this time. Any members or non-members that has been here and not been here visiting with us this morning? Yes, sir, I, I see you raising your hand. I think we want to get you a mic. Hold on for a minute. It, we make and hear you. Yes, sir. I, 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 I see you. Yes, sir. Reverend Bloom in Mount Zion. This is my church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Holloways. Yes, sir. And I'm returning today, and I need prayer. I'm in the nursing home now, but I'm still out trying to serve the Lord. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. And I need prayer, and I want to get up there where you are. <laughs> Bless your heart. Well, come on, let's give him a wonderful hand praise. Amen and amen. Uh, at this time, uh, also let me thank those that had come out on the fifth Sunday uh, at the association where we preached the word of God uh, to your hearing. And we had a wonderful time in the Lord. The choir sung well, and we, we thank God for all that was there to witness the celebration of the fifth Sunday at the association. To God be the glory. At this time, we will have our scripture reading from Reverend uh, Catherine Richardson, and then we will have our prayer by her husband, beloved uh, Reverend Lionel Richardson, at that order. Thank you.
Good morning. Praise God. Praise God. Let us stand. Our scripture reading this morning will come from Psalms 105, beginning with the first verse. Psalms 105. And it reads, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people, sing unto him, yes. sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works, glory ye in his holy name, yes. let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Precious Lord, take my hands. Lead me on and let me stand. Father, we thank you for another day that we never see. Father, we thank you for rising us this morning, closed us in our right mind. Yes, Father, we need thee. We need you right now, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, in our homes. We need you, Lord, in the dangerous highways. We need you, Lord, in the hospitals. We need you, Lord, on our jobs. We need you, Lord, everywhere we go. We ask you to cover us this morning, Jesus. Cover this house, Father. Cover the hospitals, Lord. Cover those behind prison, Father. Cover those that are standing in the need of prayer. Lord, we need a healing this day, Lord. We need you today, Lord, to bless the Logan family. Bless Brother Holloway, Father. Bless Miss Tarver, Father. Bless Deacon Skeeter, God. We thank you for him, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you for another day. Thank you for touching us this morning. Thank you for rising us up to see another day, Lord. Bless our pastor as he come today, Lord. Use him, Father. Bless the choir. We need thee right now to lift up your name. Come on, God. Stand by. Help us to keep our hands in your hand. Don't let Satan play with us, dear God. We need power over sin, Jesus. God and lead us today. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Ready for that day. My God's getting us ready. Day. My God's getting us ready for that day. Oh yeah, my, my God's getting us ready for that day. My God's getting us ready for that day. My God's getting us ready. My God's getting us ready for that day. Oh my God. Ready for this? You better, you better get ready. My God. My 
everybody for the prayers. Thank you for the phone calls. And thank you for the uh, visiting me. 
and I just want to thank everybody for all our seat. And I want to thank my wife to be my niece. <laughs> and, and keep me kind of straight on the stuff I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> and right now, I ain't just way up from Minya. So I thank everybody for that. To God be the glory. Come on, if you're happy, come on and give the Lord a hand, please. Amen and amen. We thank God for that wonderful testimony, Deke. To God be the glory that we know that God had his hands on you the whole time. We know that he's covering you even right now. So we thank God for all of you. There is a word from the Lord. Turn with me and stand to your feet, if you can, to the book of Luke, the 11th chapter. Luke, the 11th chapter. It reads as this, and it came to pass that as he was praying in the certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven, so in earth. Give us this day, this day, our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil and he said unto them which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him friend lend me three loaves for a friend of mine is in journey and come to me and I have clothed nothing to set before him. And he, and, and he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give you thee. I said unto you, Thou, he will not rise and give him, but because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many of he needed. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and it shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and know him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Verse 11 says, if a son shall ask bread, and any of you that is a father, will be, he give him a stone? Or he, if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him its serpent? The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I preached on the fifth Sunday Prayer still works. I want to preach again. I'm going to do a series starting this day, and I'm going to come back to that fifth Sunday message and throw it in there as well. But I'm going to preach a series for the last couple of Sundays, couple of Sundays to come, that prayer still works. Prayer still works. God, our Father, it's again that we come on this day to say thank you. Thank you, God, because you've been mighty good to us. God, when we woke up this morning, the sun was shining, the, the clouds were in the sky, and birds were whistling, but 
only because we are able to hear that is because you woke us up this morning. Clothed in our right mind. With a reasonable portion of our health and our strength. It's only because of you that we're here this morning. Father, we say thank you. Because we realize that there are so many like Deacon Skeeter have so much to be thankful for. May not be us today, but as the elders used to say, keep on living. Ooh. May not be your family today, but keep on living. God, we thank you today for the bread and the wine, God. We thank you that represents your body and your blood. We thank you, God. Because we realize that there's no other God but you. Now, God, hear this word on this day. Remove me out of the way so the people can see more of you. We thank you, God, while the blood is still running warm in our vein. God, I need you this morning. I need you right now, God, to help me to preach this word that you have given me on this day. Have your way today, God. Have your way. It's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. amen. Some folks would rather have houses and land. Some folk choose silver and gold, my Lord. Mm -hmm. These things they treasure and forget about their soul, but I decided to make Jesus my choice. Come on, let's say it again. And the 
again starting this series on prayer still works we solicit your prayers whatever it is whatever you might be going through it can only happen after you pray this passage of Luke, we find this is the central New Testament passage on prayer. And in this, Christ grounds prayers on relationship, and he freely charges himself with all of the responsibility for the answer. And as he has all of the affection towards the Father, for all who believe in Jesus Christ, prayer is a child's kind of petition to an all-wise and powerful God. Right prayer vegans with worship. Right prayer puts the interests for the kingdom before your own personal interests. Right prayer accepts beforehand of the Father will rather to grant or to withhold the answer. And when we read Luke 11, verse 1, we see that it is the only place in the gospel where the disciples, decide, disciples directly ask Jesus to teach them something. In some scriptures it says that he thought them saying or he gave them this example, but here 
in chapter 11, this is the only place where the disciples stop and ask Jesus directly to teach them something. And when you read it for yourself, I want you to notice that they did not ask Jesus to teach them how to pray. They said, teach us to pray. There's definitely a difference. They did not ask for a manuscript on how to pray. They did not ask what techniques to use on how to pray. They were interested in the truth because you need to know that you can know how to pray and never really pray. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. You can know how to read a map and never get where you're going. I, I know how to eat in a restaurant. I know how to dress myself. But the matter of prayer is not about listening to how somebody else pray and you try to cope their prayer. That's, that, that's what we call wanting to be like Mike. But that's not the truth of prayer. The truth of what they were looking for is this. And if you get this, your life is going to change. Here, here's what they were looking for. They were looking for God to answer their prayers. You, you don't need a college degree. You, you don't need a big bank account. You don't need a license to preach. Prayer still works. You just need to pray and come to church and testify that God still answers prayers. And I know there's somebody in here this morning who can testify that God answered your prayer. Because if you pray, and you pray right, God, God will answer your prayer. Help me, Holy Ghost. The disciples uh, did not ask Jesus how to pray. Because you can know how and still never get there. And when you read chapter 9 of Luke, you will see that he sent them out two by two. And they went everywhere around and everywhere preaching the gospel and healing the sick. And in chapter 10, he sent 70 out. And they, and they went to uh, everywhere healing every corner. They were so powerful in what they were doing to the fact that the demons were even subject under them. And after they had finished, they came back to Jesus with the smile on their faces and their chest stuck out. And they said, Lord, you should have been there. Well, we did so well that the demons were even subject to us. But when you read chapter 11, you see they don't ask Jesus to teach them how to preach. They don't ask about how to work a miracle. What they did with Acts Jesus is teach them what is so difficult for the Christian folk to do today. And that is to get down on your knees and pray to God. Because now it says anybody can preach. Anybody can teach Sunday school. Anybody can come up here and read the scripture. Anybody can sing on the choir or be in church on the staff. But it takes a real Christian, a real child of God, to know how to pray. And when you pray, I don't mean just keep it to yourself. No, I mean praying until something happens. Pray until the dope get off the street. Pray until a door is open. Pray until a sick person gets off their bed. Pray until your health is back together. God didn't get Daniel out of the lion's den. He just took Daniel's appetite. Ah, oh God, and whatever your trials are, whatever your suffering is, whatever your heartbreak is, if you pray and you pray right, God will answer your prayer. Uh, listen, when, when, when you're serious about prayer, it's like when you're sitting in the bank waiting on a financial advisor to come and tell you whether 
you've been approved for the house or not. It, it's, it's, it's a terrible thing to sit and wait. Uh, but when he says you approved, it, it's like prayer when you pray, sometimes it's painful. But, 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 and it's hard to go through something. But, but when the answer comes, if you pray and you pray right, God will answer your prayer. Uh, but now we see here Jesus when they made the request. Jesus taught them to pray. And when you pray, you need to pray with heaven in mind. God is not some higher power. Uh, President Joe Biden is higher power. But I don't pray to President Biden. We pray to the dread sovereign of this universe. And we should approach him always with reverence in our heart. If you read the Old Testament, you will see that they went to God with a name that matched their action. If God met their need, then they gave him a name for that particular action. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Sitkanu. God had a name for all what he did. But Jesus said, let's do away with the ritual stuff. Because that's played out as up to date. God is now like our daddy in this father. It says, Abba, Father, always approach God like your child is asking uh, their father to meet their needs. Uh, verse 2 says, Our Father. Uh, it says, Our Father. I'm grateful because he let me call him Father. And I didn't have to fake it or make it. I didn't have to impress anybody. Sometimes you got to forget about impressing folk and just say, Lord, I need your help. I, I need your help. Lord, I need you to bless my child. Sometimes you got to say, Lord, I need you right now. Father, stretch my hands to thee. When you look at this, Luke records what he sees as the Lord's prayer. But it really should be the model prayer because the model prayer is like a skeleton uh, and you got to put some flesh on those bones not just our father which are in heaven but you got to say sometimes our father who brought me from a mighty long way sometimes you got to say our father who opened doors that the devil had closed in my face Sometimes you got to say, our father who took care of my grandmother and my grandfather. Uh, sometimes you got to say, our father who put food on my table. Sometimes you got to say, father who put clothes on my back. Uh, sometimes you got to say, father who healed my sickness. Is there anybody up in here this morning who can testify that if you just call on the name of Jesus and say, I will father, which art in heaven, you can say, I will be thy holy name. Is there anybody who can just say, I will father, who, which art in heaven, God, you the father of Abraham. God, you put clothes on my back. God, you healed my cancer. God, you healed my heart problems. God, you healed my sickness. If you just call on the name of Jesus, I promise you that he will answer your prayer. You got to stop being cute and put some meat on those skeletons' bones. Uh, listen, God is more than a creator. He's sovereign. God is an unchangeable God. He's perfect, he's wonderful, he's awesome, he's terrible. Uh, he's the majestic God. And this good God that I'm talking about, he lets us call him 
will a father that I can go to in prayer like a child before his father. Uh, I want you to get this. Uh, my daughter Chastity, when she was a little girl, uh, I had to sit with her, and I know some of you fathers probably had to do the same. I would sit with her on the floor and play tea party. Somebody know what I'm talking about. I, I played tea party because she was my baby girl. I, I had to dress up and act like I was combing the baby's hair and and Chastity would put makeup on my face, put makeup on my lips, and I, I did that because she was my baby girl. Amen. And I cherished the ground that she walks on. Amen. And one day I came in the house and I asked her to play this game with me. And I, 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 the game was that I came and I put two quarters in my hands, in both of my hands, and I closed them real tight. And, and, and I said, Chastity, uh, which quarter is in my hand? Where's the quarter in my hand? And she would try and open my hand one finger at a time. And I would make this face and act like she was so strong opening my hand that I could not resist opening my fingers. I was trying to show her that I, it's just, what, just, just too strong. I would let her do it. Uh, but I would act like she was so strong and when she got the coin, she would run to her room and put it in her piggy bank. She did not know that I wanted her to have the coin in the first place. And if I would have used my strength, Reverend Richardson, to her weakness, she never would have been able to open my hand. But I let her pry my fingers open because I wanted her to have the coin in the first place. I'm getting ready to help somebody. When you come to God, God's got what you need in his hands. But he will let you pry open his hands. Help me, God. But the joy that comes to the Lord is that not that he lets you get the coin. But the joy that comes to the Lord is that he gets to spend time with you. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. And, and my child, Chastity, was so busy trying to open my hands till the fact she missed my face. Oh, let me help somebody. And you here this morning can be so busy looking at God's hand. So busy in other people's business. So business trying to talk about everybody else until you never will seek his face. And if you seek his face, his hands are already yours. Oh, help us, God. The Bible says, Acts and it shall be given. Seek, and it shall be found. Knock, and the door shall be opened. Prayer does not move God to do what he wasn't going to do in the first place. Prayer just shows God that you're obedient enough to practice it in the first place. You've got to have an admiration for God. But then you've got to have a dependence for God. He tells his parable, a friend at midnight. A friend dropped in on him unexpectedly. He drops in in the middle of the night, Deacon Keller, and because they are Jews, they, they would understand immediately that the host wants to be hospitable. Because the Jews like being hospitable. He does not want a friend in his home at night with nothing to eat. But the friend did not call in advance to let him know he was coming. Oh, kind of like what we do. He just shows up at night on a journey. And the host wants to set before him a good meal. But he doesn't have anything to give him. Remember, it's late at night. 
the food lion is closed. And here his friend has dropped in unexpectedly on him. And the host wants to put his best foot forward. But he doesn't have anything to give him. So he puts on his flip-flops, goes next door with the house uh, and house coat on, and he went there because he knows his friend next door has already been to the store from earlier conversation. And he has everything that he needs. He knocks at the friend's door. I know it's late, and Jimmy Fallon has already gone off. And the flag is probably floating across your TV. But my friend had dropped in unexpectedly. And I want to give him something to eat. Now, the friend doesn't even open the door. Uh, the Bible says he talks to him from the other side of the door in a grouchy voice. He says, are you serious? You have come to my door at midnight. My children are already in bed. The door and the lights are already out. Are you serious to come knock on my door? You need to come back in the morning. I have nothing to give you tonight. But the man wasn't hearing it. Uh, the Bible says that he had his friend at his house at middle of the night. And he's dropped by unexpectedly. And he needs something to eat. He needs some bread. The friend has already told him, no, go away from my door and come back another time. But the man needs some bread. Oh, let me help somebody. He, he says the kitchen is closed and the dishes had already been put away. Leave my door right now. But the man needs some bread. Oh, help me. And he knows that there is some bread in that house. And even though this could turn out bad, it teaches us the importance of prayer. Effective prayer requires steadfast dependence. He needs some bread. Uh, the Bible says that he was told to go away. And scripture tells us that because of his importunity, which means because of his persistence. In other words, I know I've asked before, but I'm not ashamed to ask again. And I'm going to keep on asking until you open up that door. Help me, Holy Ghost. He, he kept knocking at the door. And the man said, get away from my door. Get away or from my house. He says, you can tell me to get away all you want to. But I'm going to not going anywhere because I need some bread out of your house. And I need it right now. I need it, you got it, and I want it. I'm not going anywhere until you give me what I want. God, you got it, I need it, and I want it. And I'm not going anywhere until you give me what I want. Is there anybody listening to me? And I'm looking at some of you right now who want your prayer answered as soon as you pray. But God sometimes will make you wait. And you what the Bible tells us about those who wait. I need some Bible readers right now. The Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord I shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. He said, I know you got it, and I want it because I need it. And I'm not going anywhere until you give it to me. You got to learn to pray like Jacob prayed. Jacob wrestled with God. And the angel all night long until the breaking of day. And the angel said, turn me loose and let me go. For the day is breaking. And Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to turn you loose until you bless me. Can I get a witness this morning? 
He said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to turn you loose until you bless me. I'm not moving from this door. I'm not going anywhere until you bless me. Have I got any prayers in the house? God, I know it was here yesterday, but here I am today. And if you don't answer me today, I'm coming back tomorrow. And if you don't answer me tomorrow, I'm coming back the day after that. Because I know you got it, and I want it. So God, I need you to give it to me. I'm not going anywhere until you bless me. And my brothers and my sisters, that kind of praying is bold. And you got to be bold to pray like that. You know, uh, the Bible says you come boldly to the grown of grace. Because it is there that you can find mercy to help you in the time of your need. You got to be bold. I mean, sometimes you got to stand there even with tears in your eyes. You got to stand there even with pain racking in your body. And you got to stand there and say, Lord, I need you right now. And I'm not going to make a move until you answer me. You got to pray and let nothing get in your way of your praise. Because I can't praise God and hate on you. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Let me say that again. I can't get my praise if I hate on you. Uh, I can't praise God and be mad with you. I got to praise God before I get to worship. I need somebody here that who prepares themselves to come to church Sunday after Sunday. Even before you sit in your seat. You're praying at the house before you get to church. You're praying in your car and praising God before you get to church. And by the time you get in your seat, uh, you ought to be fired up and ready to go. That the smoke ought to be coming from your lips. That's why some of you fuss about somebody in your seat. Because you got to get there and put your weight on it. And you got to get there and put your worship on it. But you got to be in a familiar environment. Here it is. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I think the reason some of us pray so long is because we don't pray often enough. But when you pray often enough, God recognizes and will hear your prayer. God comes to your rescue. And that's because and God has a relationship with you that has nothing to do with your pretty words, has nothing to do with your proper language. It has everything to do with you have a relationship with Christ because you are my father and I am your child. You asked me a long time ago and I'm coming again before your presence. Because I need you once more and again. Is there anybody up in here who ever needed the Lord to come answer their prayer? Come on and answer your prayer. And sometimes God doesn't change your condition. He just changes your entity. And even though you didn't think of her like you thought, you still accepted his will and his way. Look over at Miss Turner and Miss Milton. I'm getting ready to bless you right now. Look at Miss Turner. You're looking at a miracle. I want you to look at Miss Turner. Look at Miss Mildred. Because you see them now. You're looking at a miracle. A couple of weeks ago, when the bad weather struck our community, there was a report that came across the TV that says there's a tornado in the area. Take cover now. It says take cover now. I said when you see Miss Turner and Miss Mildred, you're looking at a miracle. The tornado struck right in their backyard, knocking down every tree in sight. The neighbor's house was destroyed. 
the neighbor's house next to them was destroyed. But when you look at Miss Turner's house, not a single missing, not a chair moved, not the yard still in place. You're looking at a miracle. I tell your neighbors at a miracle. But when you are with God and God is with you, that's why you need to come to church and say, God, I thank you for all you've done for me. That's why I like to watch people praise God in the sanctuary. Because when you've been through the storm, even if it doesn't say yes, God can still say yes. Even if I don't get the promotion on my job, whatever my circumstances, I've learned that whatever state I'm in, to be content. I know how to praise God. I know how to give God praise. Is there anybody up in here who can give God praise? You might not be Miss Turner, but you've had your own storm. You ought to give God praise for the storm that God brought you out of. Glory, hallelujah. You got to learn how to pray. You got to learn how to give God all your best. Oh, I feel like preaching. You got to learn how to say, God, I need you. And I need you right now. Miss Turner had to pray. Miss Mildred had to pray. And God answered their prayer. Is there anybody understanding what I'm talking about? Uh, God, help me here. I'm going to praise him anyhow. I'm going to praise him when I'm going through. You got to learn how to be content. Because I'm going to praise him when I'm up. And I'm going to praise him when I'm down. I'm going to praise him when I got money in my pocket. And I'm going to praise him even when I'm broke. I'm going to praise him when I feel good in my body. And I'm going to praise him when my heart is broken. I'm going to praise him if the church is full. And I'm going to praise him if the church is empty. Some of the best worship that I've had to myself has been with myself. Telling God, thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for the bed I laid in last night was not my sleeping bed. Thank you that the bed I laid in was not my cooling board. Anybody other than me has ever praised God by yourself. He's a wonder-working God. He's a prayer-answering God. He will show up in the midnight hour. He will show up when you least expect it. If God ever answered your prayers and you're not embarrassed to testify, why don't you look at somebody and tell somebody you should have seen me before God got his hands on me. You have should have seen me when I was down to my last dime. You should have seen me when I was standing all by myself because it was Jesus, nobody but Jesus. Jesus, a rock in a weary land. Jesus, a shelter in the time of storm. Is there anybody up in here who knows the Jesus that I'm talking about? If God made a way for you, you ought to give God praise. If God made a way for you, you ought to lift up holy hands. If God made a way for you, you ought to stand to your feet and you ought to shout glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Jesus died. But the Bible says that bright early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. He got up with all power 
in his hands. May not be you today, but keep on living. You're looking at a miracle. God have mercy. Nothing was touched of her home. I went by and shingles were still in place. Chairs were still on the deck. The yard looked like the yard man just left today. And then you look in the backyard. And it's something you would see on TV. See trees broken off, big trees just laying in the yard. The neighbor's house totally destroyed. The house next to that totally restored. But God answered her prayers. Woo! If you pray and pray right, God will answer your prayers. Because the Bible says that the prayers of the righteous shall what? Availeth much. We thank God that God answered their prayers. They prayed in the bathroom, in the tub. But even if you're in the tub, God still hears your prayer. Woo! If you're in your car, God will still hear your prayer. If you're on your job, God will still hear your prayer. Ah. Uh, if you're in your house, God will answer your prayers. Is there anybody here this morning that know that if you pray and if you pray right, God will answer your prayers. If you get down on your knees and tell the Lord just what you want God to hear, God will answer your prayers. The old deacon used to pray, God, here I am, body bent and knee bowed. I want to thank you for reading a portion of my strength. I want to thank you that the bed I laid in was not my cooling board. I want to thank you that you gave me health and strength. Is there anybody, anybody, anybody up in here? Who don't mind giving God some praise for what he's already done in your life? Is there anybody up in here who don't mind giving God some praise because he woke you up this morning and he started you on your way? You ought to give God all your best praise because the Bible says that if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, where would you be? If it wasn't for God who blew breath in your body, where would you be? You can sit there like you don't know what I'm talking about. But if God comes right now, will you be ready? If God walked through those doors right now, will you be ready? Will you be ready to, to say, God, here I am. Take me right now. Will you be ready to say, God, you've been a good God, and I need you to bless me. Is there anybody can shout right now that, Lord, you've made a way out of no way. You've opened doors that was closed in my face. God, give me the best that I ever had in my life. Come on and give God some praise up in this sanctuary. Play. Thank you, Lord.
We got so much to be thankful for. I said we got so much. Somebody didn't really hear what I said. We, we got so much to be thankful for. Thank you, God. If, if God has been, if God has been good to you, I, I mean really, really good to you, come on and raise your hand. Come, come on, everybody in this house ought to have their hands raised. If God has truly been on your side, you ought to have your hands raised. Matter of fact, you ought to be on your feet. Some of you are sick right now as we speak in your body. But God has still been good to you. How, how many can say thank you? Without anybody looking at you and you ashamed to say, God, thank you. How many can shout, God, thank you? Right quick, I want you to make your way to the front so we can pray. Come on, make your way to the front so we can pray. We'll, we'll do communion after we pray, but I want you to come to the altar. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And when you come to the altar, don't come with you in mind. Don't just come with you in mind. Come thinking about somebody else and how you might have been a blessing to them and they've been a blessing to you. you. You ought to come lifting up holy hands telling God, thank you before you even get here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can somebody say thank you? Can, can somebody really say thank you, God? Come on, to the loudest of your voice. Tell God thank you. people standing together just to say thank you, thank you. for you've been mighty good to us even when we were not good to ourselves even when we were not good to others God you still were a good God and we come this morning, as you've said, God, boldly in your word, just to say thank you. Thanking you, God, while the blood is still running warm in our veins. Thanking you, God, that we still have breath in our bodies. Thanking you, God, that you removed the sickness out of our bodies, God. God, we say thank you. God, we're praying, God, for those that do not know you as their Lord and Savior. God, we're thanking you right now because when we woke up this morning, you were there. Yes, sir. God, when we laid down last night, you were there. Yes, when we traveled on the highways and byways yes, this morning, God, you were there. 
And even, God, that we're standing in your worship, we feel your presence even right now. God, we come right now boldly to say thank you. God, we're asking for you to continuously to cover this church, God. Bless us from the back door to the front door, from the side wall to the other wall, from the front pew to the back pew, yes, from the choir stand to the pulpit. Yes. God, we say thank you. Thank you. Woo! God, bless every member and non-member represented right now because we're all your children. And God, you said that if we act, if we seek, and if we knock, yeah. that the doors shall be open and you shall answer our prayers. We're praying right now for the body of the Mount Zion Baptist Church. Yeah. We're praying for the body of every church in this nation. That God, when we come to church, we come with our hearts open and with our minds ready to receive your word. God, we come every Sunday, God, listening to what you have to say to us. God, bless every auxiliary in this house. Bless every deacon and deaconess in this house. Bless every trustee and every usher in this house. Bless every minister, every musician, every sound ministry in this house. God, we're looking for you to bless this house in a mighty way. Touch us from our head to the soles of our feet. God, we need you right now. We need you every minute, every hour to come, God, to bless us even when we are not expecting to be blessed. You've been good. You've been mighty good to us. And God, like Ms. Turner and Ms. Mildred, you said that if we just bow down and get on our knees and just pray like we never prayed before, that you shall answer our prayers. God, bless those like Ms. Turner and Ms. Mildred who might be going through a storm right now, who was on a storm yesterday and a storm last week. But God, you said that you shall answer our storms. You stood on the boat and said, peace, be still. God, we're looking for peace to be still in this house. You said, peace, be still. When we don't have money in our pocket, you said, peace, be still. When our health is up on the horizon, you said, peace, be still. Have your way right now in the sanctuary. Have your way in this pulpit. God, because when you come, we ought to give you praise and reverence in your word. We ought to say, Abba, Father, which art in heaven, that will be thy name. When we come to you, God, we ought to come with our hearts open, ready to receive what you have for us. Now, God, have your way. Have your way. Bless now the sacraments that are getting ready to be taken for the upbuilding of your kingdom and the renewing of our bodies. Bless it now. Bless the bread and the wine that represents your body and your blood. We come now to give you all that we can give you, God. You said that if we give it to you, that everything shall be all right. So now, God, as we return back to our seats, be ready to take up the bread and the wine, we ask now that you bless it in a mighty way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. All of God's people said, amen. As you return to your seats, if there's anyone that wants to give their life to Christ right now, stay where you are up here at the pulpit and we will take your hand right now. There may be one that wants to come and, and, and give their life to Christ right now. We ask that you stay and come now that we can receive you unto God the Father. Will there be one that wants to come now and, and continuously to come and just give God your praise in your hand? There may be one right now under the sound of my voice that wants to come and just say, God, I thank you for the many blessings that you have stored. Thank you, God. 
for who you are and what you have done in our lives. Most Holy Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what we've heard. Father, thank you for your word. Father, we ask you to bless us as we go out. This week, let us be a light for those around. These and other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name we do pray. Let everyone say amen, 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 amen. and amen.